All right. Welcome to the second half, part two, Pro Football Doc podcast, Memorial Day podcast. Part one was with Marcellus Wiley as our guest. We went a little long, so we won't go too long here, but still one had some issues to discuss, et cetera. Memorial Day just got back from a La Jolla Youth Baseball All-Star practice where somehow I got uh, volunteered to coach, happy to do it, uh, probably more for my organizational skills than true baseball skills. Thrilled that my son is on the team and uh, to help uh, kids and sports. But let's talk about some injury things here, profootballdoc.com. And really in this off season, we've branched a lot to the off season. So we're gonna talk a lot about basketball. We'll do a what happened here video. We'll cover some baseball, but before we do that, let's talk football. And with football here, the uh, main thing of course is, uh, let me find it here, um, football. The vaccine carrot, we've talked about it. Here's now details of it. Dan Graziano talked about it. Fully vaccinated, no daily testing, no mask required, no quarantine after exposure, um, fully, not fully vaccinated, daily testing, mask wear, physical distancing, quarantine after exposure, et cetera. Pretty significant, really, really pretty significant. This I actually talked to some friends over the weekend here that are with teams. And yeah, there's definitely a lot of uh, educational pressure to get players and coaches and staff vaccinated. I think pretty much all coaches and staff will be vaccinated because how can you do your job if you can't have contact with players? And look, the you know, if you're the star quarterback of a team, you probably can hold out. But even then, with some leadership, you get additional freedoms if 85% of the team is vaccinated. And this is why I said all along, right, wrong, and different. They cannot force you to put a needle in your body, but they can make it easier and more enticing to do so. And in the end, uh, mask wear is one thing, social distancing is another. But the fact that you do not have to quarantine after an exposure if you're vaccinated will be huge. Uh, be it for regular season for NFL football and the same for baseball, basketball, baseball, you know, uh, if you're not vaccinated and there's an exposure and let's say it's pennant chase time or playoff time, there's a mandatory sit period that you can avoid. So that is a huge advantage for players and teams that have people who are vaccinated. And that's the vaccine carrot that uh, we have been talking about. So let's talk a little more about some football things here. News this week, uh, Saquon Barkley uh, will miss uh, OTAs and start a train camp. If you want to go to this uh, hey, Pro YouTube video dog. here. Here with the news. Uh, YouTube videos. We're putting up a bunch of videos. We're integrated at the site. Please uh, subscribe. I'm not worried about it in this video we talk about. It. I'm not worried about Saquon not practicing at OTAs. I think he's going to make a strong recovery, even though it was an ACL MCL. Um, but anyways, that's some of the news that's out there. Check out the video there. Um, Sean Merriman, lights out, asked me to confirm this. Well, asked me by Twitter. Uh, this play was on a... PCL and L there. Yes, it's AFC Championship game against the Patriots there. I can verify. Look, I honestly think that uh, his career is derailed by his PCL and LCL injury, major surgery. And we've actually, if you go back to the Sean Merriman uh, uh, podcast where he was on, I, I verify that. But I thought it was some pretty funny exchanges. Uh, SP, the other side of the uh, lights out equation, uh, wouldn't be the first time he sold a sack for me. <laughs> Hate it when I one step away. And he did. Look, he gets there a split second, and here comes SP, and Merriman gets the, the, the sack. Um, talk about that uh, in, in this video and link here how 
we had a lot of people injured that game. No excuses, not making excuses, but uh, from Sean Merriman to LT to uh, Gates uh, to Lorenzo Neal to Nick Hardwick coming off a of surgery, a lot of people. Uh, and not to mention, of course, Philip Rivers, who played six days after an e-scope. Would things have been different? Who knows? Who knows? All right, let's move on to the topic of the moment. A lot of basketball injuries out there. And uh, look, I've actually, I actually do have basketball experience. It's just, I have NBA experience. It's just not as vast as my football experience. So I kind of, you know, rightfully downplay it. I spent some time in Chicago um, as a junior physician uh, with the Bulls and related things. Uh, although, and then uh, I played a larger role with the Timberwolves uh, in Minneapolis. But uh, yeah, NBA experience, but not to the level that I have in the NFL. Actually, come to think of it, since we've got so many basketball issues, maybe this next week a great person to have on is uh, John Heffron, someone I worked with in, when I was a resident. He was the longtime Chicago Bulls doctor. Uh, in the Michael Jordan era, including the Michael Jordan era. He was in, in the last dance. So maybe that'll be a fun interview to talk to him on the Pro Football Doc podcast, especially since we talk so much basketball stuff now. And let's go to some basketball things right now. Um, basketball. Chris Paul, CP3, initially said to be a shoulder contusion, then said... You know, some people speculated Stinger, but I don't think Stinger, if you look at this picture, this is kinesio tape, cake tape for a shoulder injury, not Stinger. He had a previous AC joint separation. I'm not sure that's what it is. I think it's a shoulder subluxation. Game one, he left and was a little iffy. Game two, 23 minutes, six points. Game three, 27 minutes, only seven points. Game four, a rebound for uh, CP3. So I think that shoulder hopefully is calming down. and uh, But that certainly is a lingering factor with the shoulder subluxation, uh, obviously comparing him. And part of the reason is Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis left the game with a groin strain and the Lakers lost to the Suns with Chris Paul's resurgence. But also, I'm not sure Anthony Davis is going to play unless that his removal from that game was strategic and very precautionary I don't see Anthony Davis playing this next game and his absence could last even longer than that but let's talk about Luka Doncic Luka Doncic's injury he has a similar K tape but much different type right this is more shoulder based this is more neck and trap based uh, there was a report unverified that it is indeed a cervical disc herniation and a nerve issue with the disc pressing on the nerve. And that's what I worried about all along with uh, Luca. This is a wrap to keep the spasm down and heat it up. We talked about it in OutKick before this game, that this could linger throughout the series here for the uh, Mavericks. We looked at best and worst case scenarios. And in here, I summarized uh, and uh, hypothesized that it was a cervical strain uh, rather than cervical strain, but the issue really is a radiation radicular neck issue where it goes down the arm and the weird feeling that he has. And that does not go away overnight. Chris Paul's shoulder subluxation is more likely to go away than Luka Doncic's neck issue with the nerve issue. I don't think Luka Doncic is a stinger. I think it's a herniated disc pressing on a nerve. At least that's my theory. Once again, inside knowledge, but never insider information. So I can't confirm it firsthand. Um, we talked about Anthony Davis a little bit here. And then uh, let's move on to uh, some baseball and other things as we'll keep this segment, like I said, for Memorial Day relatively short here. Baseball. Um, got tweeted at this and I think it's a good educational point here's a college kid um oh and this is my son this is the video from earlier proud of him I guess we can analyze this video it was a Charlie Brown Lucy moment 
but there was no Lucy. No concussion. Gets up, finishes the play. Obviously, that was when he was quite young there. Uh, he was two or th almost three, I guess. Uh, here you go. Uh, this is a kid that apparently has hit a bunch of home runs with a torn ACL. You can see the brace on his leg. Uh, three home runs, seven RBIs since returning and uh, with a torn ACL. You can see the hitch in his gate there. The only reason I show that is congratulations to Tim Elko, old Miss, old Miss. But here's the thing, you don't need an ACL to hit in baseball. Uh, you need it to be dynamic and run, jump and play, but straight line running or even rounding the bases, you don't need an ACL. There's certain activities in sports that are ACL dependent. Hitting a baseball is not ACL dependent. No surprise there. Going back to that AFC championship game, a quarterback, if it were LT with the ACL injury uh, instead of Phillip Rivers, he wouldn't have been able to play, but Phillip Rivers was able to. So there is a little bit of that going on. All right, let's move on a little bit here and uh, video of the week. What happened here? Love this video because, uh, whoops, let me get back to find it. Sorry, guys. Uh, here is the video of, I can find it. Lost my cursor here. Oh, we got the dog here. All right. So I'm distracted by Cosmo, the dog. Oh, all right, doggy. Okay. Yes, Davis. All right. You want to come in and join us here, Davis? Yeah. There's my boy, Davis, on the podcast from home. And Davis, who is your favorite player? Tatis. Yes, it is. Oh, where's my cursor? Oh, my cursor went. Usually if you do the three fingers straight up, it should bring your cursor back. Oh, there it is. There it is, okay. All right, so here we have our dog. We have Davis here, but here's your favorite player, Tatis. Check out this. This is something out of the Matrix movie. I mean, the amount of athleticism it takes to move his leg and body and hip and do the splits and not get broken in two is amazing, huh, Davis? Mm -hmm. What number are you, Davis? 23. For who? La Jolla? For what? All-Stars. All, All right, so he's Tatis there. But I think this, I can't say enough about this video here. I can't say enough about this video here. And uh, let me stop the screen share here. And, and Davis, now everyone can see La Jolla Youth Baseball, our all-stars, number 23, Tatis. <laughs> Any case, um, the reason why I show that video for Tatis is that's an amazing amount of uh, flexibility, agility, reaction time, and athleticism. And this is why he's like a highlight player right now. But this also has something to do with his shoulder and why he's able to play through. He's not a tight guy with a big labral tear. Because he's so flexible, he's a very flexible, loosey-goosey guy. You see that in the video. And his shoulder is more prone to instability. I mean, there's some people that can literally bend their thumb and touch their forearm. I can't. Kids can more than, than me. You're not that flexible either, Davis. Now here, yeah, you're fairly flexible there, Davis. But let's see here. You're, you're, you're going to be like dad. You're not that flexible. Uh, but Tatis is different. His collagen is looser, which is what makes him the great athlete that he is, his increased range of motion, but puts his shoulder at risk. So far, he's doing great from his comeback, 
but undoubtedly he still has a labral tear and will need surgery. But go Padres, huh? They're in first place. They're doing very well. But they are. Yeah, they're doing very well. All right, guys, that, that'll do it for the Pro Football Doc Podcast. Thanks to Marcellus Wiley, that dude, for coming on part one. Thanks to Davis for coming on part two. Cosmo, you want to say hello to everybody? Come here, Cosy. Come here, Cosy. Okay. And Cosmo, our chocolate Aussie Labradoodle toy. And one more. Oh, and another one who's not taking a nap. Uh, basically, it's a free-for-all in the home studio today on Memorial Day. Come here, Debbie. Oh, what, Debbie, what happened to your nap? No? Okay. Want to say bye-bye? Okay. All right. That's it for the Pro Football Doc Podcast. Thanks for watching and listening. Bye-bye.